What are you reading right now? Let me know in the comments below. I'm super curious and I'm always looking for book recommendations. And I know a lot of people are. So I decided to make a video about some of the books that I'm reading this year, some of the books that really stood out to me and that are on my list at the moment. Again, let's grow this list. So let me know in the comments what you're reading and what's on your list. What are your favorite books that you would recommend? If, especially if it's a book that didn't make this list. But let's get into it. Oh, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a tour. I'm gonna show you our little library that we are building with our with, with our husband, with our husband, without, with my husband. <laughs> it's still a work in progress and we just received uh, some books recently, um, another batch of books. I'll tell you all about this at the end of the video. Let's get into books. A little disclaimer before we get into it is that I'm dyslexic and I like consuming my content in different formats. So I'm a huge audiobook and textbook girl and sometimes I read different things in different formats simultaneously just because it makes sense in my brain and yeah. It, that's how it is. <laughs> so some of the books that I will be mentioning, I don't physically have, I don't have a physical copy of it. I have them on my app, but I'll share a screen recording of them. So without further ado, let's get into the books that I read this year that stand out to me and that I'm reading right now. So first one, I started off the year with playing to win. This book was awesome. It's all about strategy. And I think that it is vital for anyone who is in business or who wants to get into business and who wants to read, um, who wants to know more and learn more about strategy and strategic thinking. Very interesting book. Um, I think that book was presented to me by someone as if you read one book on strategy, let that book be this book. So really enjoyed it very interesting highly recommend it if you know if you are in business and you want to get better at strategic thinking or if you are just in general are interested in strategy very interesting um book then we went on to the coaching habit which is an awesome book and it's all about you know how we are really good about giving recommendations to someone when they have an issue that's great, but if you ask them questions instead of giving them recommendations, that is a much better way of serving them and helping them work things out. And that's something that I, you know, really struggle with because I jump to giving advice all the time. Let me know in the comments if you also feel the same way about that phenomena. But I mean, I feel like it's a very you know, instinctual thing. We want to help someone, but sometimes asking questions and letting them figure the answers for themselves is more powerful. So the coaching habit is all about that. And honestly, I need to reread it because I feel like it's something that it's one of those books. A lot of these books are um, the kind of books that you want to keep on going back to, um, to get the next level of practice. I don't know. Basically to get to the next level of the wisdom that they're sharing. There it is. I found it. Then the next book is I have it here physically and it's the 8080 marriage. Um, I worked with the authors on some of their social media strategy and I love this book. It's all about relationships and the theory is all about how, you know, how back in the day, the man was the stereotypical person who went to work and was kind of, um, you know, getting the money. And then the woman was at home and she was focusing on maintaining the home and the relationship and doing all of the, uh, I don't know why a Spanish word comes to mind, that is, uh, all of the, you know, like the things, the tasks, the errands. The woman was in charge of that. So the model of the relationship back then was 80 20 so the woman was doing 80 percent of the you know household stuff keeping the home together and the man was doing 20 percent and then in the modern world with women working we moved on to a 50 50 model which leads to a lot of conflicts of you know i did this so you do this and you know kind of uh, almost 
I don't know, counting who, do, who does what. And their theory is all about doing 80-80 and like aiming to do 80 for both partners, aiming to do 80. And they call it radical generosity. It's all about, you know, putting all in into the relationship, putting all of your energy and investment into the relationship and seeing it as benefiting the team, right? Because it's not one partner against the other and figuring out what that 50-50 model is, but you are doing this for the team, for the betterment of the relationship, for the betterment of the household. Very interesting book, highly recommend it to anyone. You know, whether you have a partner or you don't have a partner, whether you have issues in your relationship, whether you don't have issues in the relationship, and you know, if you don't have issues in your relationships, are you even human? <laughs> yeah, very interesting book, highly recommend it to anyone. Then, How to Talk to Anyone. I'm still listening to this book, still working through it. It's just because there's so much um, content there and it's very actionable. Amazing, amazing, very actionable, but it's just taking me time to process some of the uh, tips that are given to um, to you, to me. I'm listening to this book on Audible and it is all about how to connect to people. And the first part is all about how to meet people, how they perceive you, how to be, you know, how to have a presence about you that signals to people that they want to talk to you, they want to get to know you. And then right now I'm getting into the part of um, how to how to end small talk and how to get to the actual, you know, the gist, like how to have meaningful conversations, meaningful connections as opposed to small talk. Very interesting stuff. Honestly, highly recommend to anyone, especially if you're an introvert like me and you are, you know, sometimes find it hard to navig navigate social situations and you just find yourself uh, getting in your head and feeling awkward about your, and like overthinking every single move been there, done that, do that on a regular basis. Basis. So yeah, this is a book for you if you feel like I've just described you as well. The next one, the next book I want to mention is Winning the Brain Game. And it is something also that I've listened to and it was an amazing book. It talks about, I want to call it Seven Deadly Sins of the Brain. It was basically seven biggest flaws of the brain and maybe I'll do a separate video on that actually because it's super interesting. And those seven flaws, I just saw them in my day to day. I still see them in my day to day, um, but I'm just more aware of them. And now this book has given me the techniques to overcome them. And it's all about, you know, our creativity, um, innovation, problem solving, super helpful for any human being. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this book. I, again, all the links, not again, I have not mentioned this before, all the links to all of this book, these books that I'm mentioning it, I'm mentioning is, will be in the description. Okay, I, I've had enough caffeine. I need to slow down. Speaking of caffeine, huh, guess what? The next book on our list is Caffeine, which is a book by Michael Pollan, an author that my husband worships very michael pond's work is really really interesting and caffeine is an audible original that we listened to on our way to our first marriage anniversary uh one year of marriage anniversary we, we took a road trip and we we're listening to it very interesting talks about uh not just the effects of caffeine on our body which you know important to know i feel like because it's a drug that we take every single day and most of us humans are addicted to it, um, very much so. But it also talks about the history of coffee and how it coincided with the um, enlightenment era of, you know, the society, the humanity, and it has very interesting it gave me very interesting thoughts on, well, first of all, biology and how coffee has managed to, the, the plant coffee has managed to spread itself, right? It, it has managed to get us addicted, a big mammal with the ability to plant and to like get other crops out and like plant coffee. So it managed to 
honestly populate this planet so much via us and also how different the state of consciousness that we get into is when we drink coffee versus when we don't drink coffee. Uh, Michael Pollan talks about it in the book and super interesting. So if you have a road trip coming up and you want an audio book, I think it's just uh, an audible original, but I don't know, I might be wrong. It might come uh, free with an audible subscription. So check it out, highly recommend it. Speaking of addictive and contagious things, look at my transitions now. Uh, the other book that I just read, I just finished it during my trip back to Russia, um, is Contagious. Contagious is all about, and no, no, it's not, <laughs> not pandemic re related. Um, Contagious is all about making content that spreads, that people share. And of course, you know, it's very, relevant to someone who is a content creator, but it's also very interesting in terms of the psychology of why people share. And for example, I'll give you a little tidbit. Um, it was, the, the book talks about why do we overshare sometimes and when something emotional, really emotional happens that activates you, activating emotions, for example, anger, um, excitement, etc. we are much more likely to share things and to overshare. So for example, you were excited that you just got married and you start oversharing maybe some details that, first of all, not everybody needs to know, but also potentially now, whenever I think about sharing things online, I just think about cyber criminals and how they can use that information to, um, socially engineer you and trick you into giving them your money, your passwords, etc. Yes, I am a cynical, cynical person, but that's the cyber climate we exist in and we gotta be careful. So yeah, very interesting book. Um, if you are in the content creation space, if you're interested in uh, marketing, etc., highly recommend it. It's, I guess it's a more of a niche book uh, compared to, for example, caffeine or burning, winning the brain game, but very, very interesting and highly recommended to anyone who is interested in that kind of niche and topic. Right now, I'm also listening to, I started, I started listening to books, listening and, you know, have the uh, whisper sync function where it basically syncs um, on the screen, the text that basically you're reading it with uh, the book. I started doing that when I'm running and I have, I'm now running for like an hour at a time on our treadmill and my brain just gets pretty bored. So I do that. So this is the book that I'm reading right now like that. And it is called seven ha habits of highly effective people. It's a classic. I've never read it. So I'm giving it a go and I'm very early on. Um, into the book. I think I'm still on the introduction. I haven't gotten to the actual seven habits, but so far so good. Um, it is definitely more old school than let's say contagious that I read in the same manner. Um, and contagious got to the point much quicker, but we'll see so far. So good classic book. Let me know if you've read it before in the comments. And finally, I'm very excited about this. I'm reading built to belong. And I am so excited about this book because Natalie has been such an inspiration for me for what I'm doing with, with what I was doing with Coding Blonde and now with Stereotype Breakers. She started the movement of community over competition. You may have heard about it. And this book is all about her journey of discovering the power of the movement, of the notion of, you know, community, creating communities versus competing against each other. And I just started the book, this book, but I'm super excited to be reading this. Natalie has been such a wonderful, just like shining light <laughs> on social media for me over the years. And I've done an interview with her actually before, and I'm hoping to do another interview uh, about this book and you know, like I'll have all the little markers and stuff like that. I'm, I'm so excited. This could be my first book interview uh, for the podcast that I'm starting soon. Oh my God, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and have your notifications on if you wanna stay tuned. But to watch our other interview with Natalie, 
here <laughs> will be the link and also in the description yeah i really am um i have too much caffeine in the system and of course check out this book highly recommend it as well natalie is just awesome and i mean it, it, if you wanna if you want to be convinced that you need to read this book watch our interview a few years back and then come back here and you'll realize that natalie has so much wisdom to share and i'm just I'm just starting this book, so I can't quote it exactly, and I don't want to create any false expectations, but I'm just so incredibly excited. So yeah, those were the books that I have read or I'm reading right now, and here are some of the books that are on my list. Um, the first one is Deep Work. I've heard wonderful things about it from my friend Sienna, who is all about books. In fact, I should probably do an interview with you, Sienna, if you're watching this. We've talked about this before. We've talked about a lot of different things. Um, we need to revisit that. Okay, so deep work, it's all about creating time for you to really focus on things that is uh, on work without any distractions, without meetings, without social media and like notifications, how to create that time. Um, I don't know if it actually talks about how to create that time for deep work, but it talks about the benefits of creating those times um, for deep work, at least from what I've heard and read. Um, so that's on my list. Creativity Inc. is the next book that's on my list. I've done an interview with Karen and we were talking about creativity and building companies, etc. The founders of Pixar have written this book and it's all about overcoming barriers to inspiration and creativity, all that, all that st good stuff. I have not read it, so I cannot tell you all about it just yet, but it's on my list. The next one is I will, I will Teach You To Be Rich. And I've heard about this book from so many people that, you know, it's now their Bible, financial Bible, or it has opened their eyes to the mistakes that they've made uh, when it comes to their finances. So even though I have been on my own journey of um, you know, getting my finances together and, you know, all of that, all of that good stuff. I feel like I need to read this book. I need to make sure that I have checked off all of those marks and I'm secure. I'm feeling good about what I'm doing in life. So yeah, that book is already in my Kindle and in my Audible because I think it comes with Kindle Unlimited. I love those things. Okay, the next one is a more beautiful question. And again, that goes back to the art of asking questions and not jumping to, um, you know, advice. And questions are so powerful. And this book, from what I've read, is all about finding the right questions to ask. So yeah, that's on my list. School of Titans is another book that accidentally ended up on my shelf on my kindle shelf with kindle unlimited once i subscribed so i am definitely reading that i don't know much about it but it's on my list so i decided to share it if you've read it before let me know in the comments what you thought about it and then flow okay where it is where is it i have it here it's all about the the experience of flow you know like when you are working on something and then all of a sudden time becomes this crazy concept that you don't understand slash it just goes so quickly because you're in the flow you're doing it it's working you're i i guess it's related to deep work but it's more of a it's more of a state that you're either in or not and finding activities that um help you get into that state of flow is very interesting is very helpful so this is the book that i still have on my bookshelf that i need to get reading on um, this bookmark is just in a random place. I barely started this one, so still on my list to do. And then finally, I have been recommended Laziness Do Not Laziness Does Not Exist, which from what I understand is all about the notion of toxic productivity um, and how we need rest. And based on the title, it's all about the fact that laziness is actually good for you. We'll see. I have not read it. I have not read too much about it. I've just been recommended it by someone who I really admired. Teresa, how are you? Um, and uh, it's on my list. 
So wanted to share it with you. Let me know what books are on your list. I'm very curious to hear that. And also if you have any books to recommend for me that you have already read and you're just like ready to vouch for them. You're like, this is a good one. Please add it on your list to your list. Also, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video? If you have, what are your thoughts on them? Let me know in the comments. Super curious to continue this book conversation. And if this is a topic that you're very interested in, maybe we can do a regular check-in on what everybody is reading. And I don't know, maybe do a running list of books that we recommend to each other. I don't know, let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in. And just like promised, this is our home library in progress. Um, it's in my husband's office and uh, we just recently got another batch of books, so they're not, they haven't been really arranged because this room is on the third floor and it gets really hot. It's really hot in here right now. And so we don't really spend time here. So we just put them in piles and they're in piles for now. But the, the library is being built. He's more of a um, paper book person as opposed to me where I've already explained that I read all the different formats, but he is more of a paper book guy and I love it. It's so nice to have books at home. I really love it. And finally, just let me know what you thought about this video, this format. Super curious, super open to your feedback, suggestion, ideas. I am waiting in that comment box. I'm listening. Yes, I am listening. I get notifications when you comment on my phone and I will be responding. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and share it with a friend who also loves books. Thank you so much for engaging with this video because every type of engagement, even a dislike, helps with the algorithm and helps spread the word, helps support this channel and I appreciate you for doing that. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because good things will be coming your way including that podcast which I'm very excited about and I will share more in the community tab so if you're not um, active there yet, you know what to do. We will be launching it hopefully sometime in September. I'm very excited about it. It will be video and audio but more details to come so stay tuned. We can also be friends on other social media. You can find us as Stereotype Breakers. Have a wonderful time today you're currently experiencing. Bye.